Okay, let's take a quick look at our navigation inside of the modeling workspace. To do this, I'm going to add some geometry. I'll come over here to 3D Primitives and click on the 3D Primitives tool. And I'll get some options for this specific tool, as well as some icons showing me a selection of 3D Primitives to choose from. It's already placed the first one inside the workspace for me. I don't want to use this one, so I'm going to change it to this cube and I'll use this gizmo now to shrink this one down. And there we can see our 3D primitive cube. This will do for now, so I'm just going to hit apply. And you'll notice it changed from an orange color to a green. Green meaning that it's now inside the scene. The tool is still active, and if I just move the object to the side here, I've still got this active cube, and 3D Code is waiting for me to place another cube into the scene. So orange means it's an inactive object waiting to be placed, and green means it's actually being placed. For now, I'm happy with the green cube where it is, so I'm just going to select a different tool to deselect. I'm also going to now enable the axes so we can see which axes we are looking at in our scene here. We can see that we've got our Z, which is blue, green for the Y axis, red for the X axis. I'm going to right click and zoom back in to the cube object. If I want to rotate around this cube, I'll hit the left mouse button to rotate. And if I want to pan around, then I'll use the middle mouse button to pan. It's quite simple. Right to zoom, left mouse button to rotate, middle mouse button to pan. When modeling, sometimes it's easier to work in an orthographic projection. So one thing I can do here is I can click on this small icon here where it says toggle between perspective and orthographic. And you'll notice that the hotkey for this is number five on the keypad. I'm just going to use the icon for now. And now you can see that I'm in an orthographic projection. So now if I left click on my mouse and orbit around, if I hold down shift, I will snap to a particular view. In this case, if you notice here, I'm in the back view. Again, left click and orbit around, press shift and snap, in this case, to the front view. So once that shift is released, I can freely orbit around the model. If I go to this camera icon here, click and wait for my cursor to change to this uh, arrow, I can drag this menu off. You'll see here that we have those front, back, left views, etc. And we also have a series of keyboard shortcuts on the number pad for quick reference to those particular views. So for example here for the front view, if I click the number 2 button on the number pad, I will snap to the front view and so on and so forth for the rest of these. You'll notice as well a little further down that we have the Add Camera Shortcut. Essentially what this does, if I find a view that I particularly like, then I can use the shortcut here of the Control button and the Up arrow to save that view. You'll notice down at the bottom a small message saying that that's been saved. So now, for example, if I move around here and choose a different view, and then I want to get back to that previous view, I can use these options here and say, switch to the previous shortcut. And it will snap me back to that previous shortcut. I can also save these camera angles in much the same way as you save a normal document, simply clicking this button and saving out to an external file and then load that camera in. It's, it's very useful if you've got like a scene 
or a particular shot that you want to test your model in. For example, if you're doing a building of some kind, you might want a low perspective shot and just see how that works at a low angle and save that particular view of that model. In this scene, you can see I have three cubes positioned in different locations. Previously, when I held down the right mouse button, I was able to zoom in and out. Left mouse button, I was able to rotate or orbit. And middle mouse button, I was able to pan. This was because I was clicking in an open space outside of the geometry. If I want to be a little bit more specific, I can use the Alt button on the keyboard. Let me show you what I mean. What I'll do here is I will choose Rotate Around World Center. So I click that option. And what I'll do is hide these objects. Zoom in. And you'll notice that when I press the Alt key on the keyboard, a small mini axis appears dead center in the world right where those axes converge. So with my old down, you can see quite clearly, as I toggle it on and off, that mini axis. And it was positioned here, around the world center. If I change that to around the current pick point, like so, and I turn my geometry back on, notice now that this small axis is following my cursor around, waiting for me to create a pick point on the geometry. So for example, on this cube here, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see. You can see that with my Alt pressed down, the mini axis is following me around. This is a little bit like the 3D cursor in Blender. Wherever I click, holding the Alt button down with my left mouse button, I'm orbiting around. So let's move over to this section here. And now I'm orbiting around this vertex that's highlighted. So this gives me more focused orbiting around objects. Another one that we can choose, which is useful, is this rotate around a custom point. And the, sh the keyboard shortcut for that is F on the keyboard. So for example, if I leave my cursor here and press F. You'll see by holding down the Alt key, where I clicked now, it's a fixed position where I last clicked there. And now I will alter, um, rotate around that object. Again, I will choose F on the keyboard down here. And now you can see I'm rotating around that point where I pressed F. If I hide this blue cube and press Alt, you can see that was where, that was the location where the axis is where I pressed the F key. So when you're using these options down here, by far the most useful ones are around custom point, world center and around the current pick point. It's worth noting as well that if I zoom in on this area here and with the Alt button down, you can see that I'm able to move the cursor and that mini axis beyond the actual object. However, if I keep going, at some point this will stop. So let's draw that again. So from here, it's following my cursor. And then at that point, even with my Alt button held down, it stops at a certain point beyond the geometry. So the last method of navigation that we'll look at here is looking at these little icons in the top corner of our UI here. You'll notice here that we have this rotate icon. So if I choose the rotate icon, I can rotate around my scene. Next to it is the pan. So I can pan around using the left mouse button. The magnifying glass is the zoom, again, using the left mouse button. 
and over on this side here we can see this icon which is called the frame and this is something which will help us to focus on a selected object. Let's say for example this object here is selected but I'm looking over in this direction at this object. If I hit the frame button the selected object will appear in my viewport. It's a good way to very quickly frame the object that you're interested in. If at any point you want to return to a view where the axis is in the center, then simply hit this small house icon here, which returns everything so we can see the main axis in the center of our viewport. Another option that you may find useful is this icon here, which appears with a small dot, a square, and the description tells you essentially what this does. And if I'm in a current perspective mode, as I am here, this option will take me into an orthographic and choose the nearest snap view, like the front, back, sides, etc., and position the view along that axis. So for example, here, if I click the button, you can see it's taken me into an orthographic projection and it picked the closest snap point, which was the right side in this case. And now we're viewing down this axis. So again, if I'm closer, I'll turn back on the perspective mode and go closer to a top view, for example. It's a very quick way again to visualize your scene, your, your object, in an orthographic view from a specific viewpoint. So again, we'll click that and it will snap to the top view and switch to orthographic. Another option that's useful for focusing your navigation is the icon that's next to the frame icon called Focus on the Brush. Now you need to have a keyboard shortcut assigned to this for this to work properly. So you can see here that my cursor and my brush, the circle around my cursor, is hovering over this particular polygon. If I hit Alt F as my keyboard shortcut, then it zooms in on the location where my cursor or my brush was resting. There's no left or right mouse button needed on this. It's purely driven by the keyboard shortcut. So again, if I hover over this polygon and with Alt F pressed, it will zoom in on the location of that particular polygon. Another icon to look at on this menu is this small field of view icon here. And this simply allows you to adjust the field of view of our camera, which looks at our objects. So by clicking on this icon and dragging either to the left or the right, you can decrease the value. You can see that small number decreasing underneath the icon to flatten out the image. And then if we obviously go in the opposite direction, we're changing the perspective to this intense. Roughly, it needs to be kept around about 30, 30 35 is a good setting. But if you're using this and reducing your size like this and then zooming out, you're obviously going to get more of an orthographic or a, a kind of a um, isometric view of your object at that point. So normally a size 35 is around about where it can be kept. And obviously you've got the toggle of the orthographic and, uh, and perspective views there. Okay, that sums up the navigation. Next we'll look at primitives inside of 3D code. Yeah.